everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Production. And you know what time of the year it is. It's getting cold outside. We had our first snow here in Canada. It means that Christmas is coming. But more importantly, it means that a new version of Cubase came out and that's always super exciting. This time it's Cubase 11. So I'm back with my classic Cubase review. Now, before we start, if you like that kind of content, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Now let's dive right in. So what's new in Cubase 11? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, let's find out. The first new feature that I want to look at is if we go under File, Export, Audio Mix Down, we have our Export Audio Mix Down window. And as you can see, it looks pretty. Uh, they changed a bunch of things. Uh, for example, uh, the channel selection right here, we now have proper icons. We have the matching colors. So let's look at this icon right here. If I change the color of the track, it follows right here in that window. So it's beautiful. We also now have a search channel window. So let's say I'm looking for my sax channel. I can just type it in. It appears and I can select it to export it. Um, we now have, if we go under multi multiple channels, we now have sync selection to channel track selection. So that's really cool because now if I click this, I can go in my project window and decide which track I want to export just by selecting them. So let's say I want to export those three tracks. They automatically appear here and they're selected for export. So it's really handy. I really like that. It's always nice to be able to select the track that you want directly in your project window. Uh, another thing that appeared in this version is the preset for file formats. So let's say I do mastering. I often have to export uh, WAVE 44.1 16 bits, then the MP3 version for online platforms and different formats. And sometimes, you know, I change some settings beforehand and I forgot to change them the back. So it's super easy now to save some presets for that. So let's say I want this preset for MP3 44.1 220 kilobytes second. I click on this do save preset and I can do MP3 uh, 44 320. And now let's say I want a wave preset uh, 4416. I can do the same thing and I want to insert IXML chunk. So let's try that. Uh, wave 4416. So now it's super easy to switch between the two presets. Uh, another cool thing that they added, if you're under the multiple option to export multiple tracks, you can now decide what you want to export. It's called effects, but it's basically letting you choose what you want to print on those exports. So if, for example, I want the track to be dry, so it won't consider any of the plugins, any of the sends, any of the group after that, or even the, the channel strip, there's an option here called disable dry. So it's just gonna export the track as it is without any plugins or inserts or anything. Uh, the cool thing about this is if let's say you have a mono track that is routed into a stereo group. Usually when you export that track, it's going to be a stereo file. But if you select this without the effects, it's going to keep it as a mono file. So that's a thing to keep in mind. You also have the insert and strip. So it's going to take into consideration all the inserts and the channel strip that you have on that specific channel. And you can select group and sends. So it's going to take into consideration all your plugins plus your groups and their plugins, your sends and their plugins and channels. And you obviously have master, which is pretty much everything, including the master inserts, everything that you have on the master, it's gonna include everything. So it's really handy because when you export stems, you can now choose what you want to export. So these are really cool stuff, but the big new feature is the export queue. So you can now add up to 20 different tasks. So it's really cool when you're working on a big session once more and you have many, many different type of jobs that you want to do. So let's say, for example, I want to export uh, my master first. I'm going to call it master. It's only going to be the stereo bus and I want it to be a wave. So if I click on add to queue, it's going to show me the file name, the file path, the format, and I can delete this job queue. I can update it. So if I change something here, I can click on update. And now let's say I also want to export stems. So I select the track that I want to export. I want to change that to MP3 
and I add it to the queue. So now it's showing me that I have five files selected, their names, their path, and the file format right here. So let's mix cycle markers with that. Let's say I want to also export cycle markers in waves. So it's going to export the two cycle markers that I have here for all the tracks selected. So that's going to be a bunch of tracks. So let's do that and see what it's going to give me. So as you can see, there's a lot of track in that job. I can see again the file format and everything. So let's say I want to change what I did in the first one. Instead of wave, I want an MP3. So now the little update job button became orange. So if I click on it, it's going to update it. When I'm ready, I can just click on start queue export. So let's do that right now. So it exported everything. And just to prove it to you, if I click here to open the folder, I can see all of the tracks that I just exported. This is amazing. I really enjoy that. I think it's a really good addition to Cubase. I'm happy about this feature. Now let's move on. The next feature I'm going to take a look at is the ability to have ramps and curves for CC information in MIDI tracks. So this is really handy for many reasons, but let's say I have a MIDI track here. I put on some notes. Okay, so let's say I want to edit the modulation. Usually just like that, we used to have steps. So let's say I had a dot here and I want to move it around. It's only going to show me steps, which is a bit annoying because let's say I want to have a proper ramp here. It wasn't possible. Well, it's now possible and it's easy to do. As you can see, there's a circle in the middle of the step. We just have to double click on it and now we can have ramps. And if we play around with that circle, we, we can have smooth curves. So it's way more precise now with what you can do with CC information. And that's not only for modulation, but pretty much everything with CC. Another really cool thing is if we're doing pitch bend, I always struggle to try to make really good pitch bend with my MIDI controller when I'm using the pitch wheel because I never end up being perfectly on the note. Now it's super easy to do uh, because they added a grid that you can uh, decide if you want it to snap to tone, semitone, and you can decide the range of the grid that you see. Now you have to adjust that in your VST instrument if you're using a VST instrument as well because it's not going to change the VST instrument. It's just going to give you a reference that you can snap on to be on the exact pitch range that you need. So let's say I put two here and I decide to click on this snap button. Now it's really easy. Let's say uh, this piano note, I want it to ramp up uh, one semitone and I want to do a smooth ramp with it. It pitched up perfectly. It snaps really well. So let's do plus two now. And same thing if, if I want to go down. This is amazing. I really like that. It's now super easy and precise uh, when you want to edit those pitch bend afterwards. Now the next feature will stay into that MIDI track. We now have something new in the inspector right here on the left. It's called global tracks. So it's now easier than ever to see everything that is in your global track. So let's say in your project window here, you have a chord track, a tempo track, signature track, video, markers, name it. Uh, you can now see it in the MIDI editor. So you can select what you want to see, what you want to hide. And the cool thing is that it's not just for visibility. You can also edit them so you can move them around. So now let's say I want uh, to edit my MIDI and I want it to snap to those events. It's super easy. I enable the snap button. I click on event in my grid selection. And now when I move MIDI notes, it's also going to snap to the events that I see in my global track. Really handy stuff. Nice addition again. Another cool thing to stay on that MIDI editor window is we now have scale assistant. Now we used to have chord track to do that. Uh, so we could do chord track. We could uh, set up scales right here and make the MIDI follow those chord track or uh, scale. But we now have a scale assistant and it's super handy because if let's say I have multiple notes, let's do a random chord. And if I select that chord, it's going to give me 17 scale suggestions. So these are scales that includes those notes. So it's super easy to find out what scale you're in. Let's say I add more notes. 
Now it's going to be even narrower. It only has seven options. So I can say, yeah, this is in G melodic minor. So if I click on that, if you want to see what notes are in that scale, you can change the visibility here and put it to scale in chords instead of velocity because velocity you're going to see uh, the classic red color for the different velocity but if you change it to scale in chord every chords that are not in your scale are going to be red so you can tweak them and see on the fly if your notes are in the in the scale that you selected here you can also say show scale note guides so it's kind of hard to see but you see the, that the notes are moving around in the grid to help you always have your notes in the scale you also have snap pitch editing which means that if you move notes around they're always going to be on a note in the scale so it's impossible to put it on a note that is not in the scale so that's Andy. Uh, let's say you know in what scale you're working and you want to edit some notes that you did that were wrong. You can enable the snap pitch editing and you can't be wrong. <laughs> so you also have the snap live input. So for this, let's say I play with my uh, keyboard and I enable it. It automatically adjusts the notes that I'm playing to be in the scale that I'm playing. So I can even play live and never be out of my scales. <laughs> this is a cheat, but it's still pretty cool to have that. Uh, you also have a quantize pitches. So let's say I move um, some notes around. I add a bunch of notes that are not in the, in the proper scale. If I select them and quantize them, it's going to bring them to the closest note in that scale. Another thing that they introduced now is, as you can see, the keyboard looks way better. It's cleaner. Uh, there's no gaps between notes now. And you can zoom in and out of the keyboard, kind of like in the ruler right here. So if you go on the left part of the keyboard, you have a white line. And if you click and hold and you move your mouse, you can zoom in and out to give you a better view of the keyboard it's super quick. Another neat thing is you have another option here called pitch visibility. So if I enable it, I have two options in the menu right here. I have show pitches with events. So it's only gonna show me the pitch and the keyboard notes that I have notes on. So if I click on show pitches from scale assistant, now it's only gonna show me the notes that are in my scale. So if I turn it off, it goes back to normal. So once again, another tool that helps you out. Now there's also a bunch of score editor improvements. I'm not gonna go in uh, those features. But I highly suggest you to take a look at the manual to see what it added. I never use the score editor, so it's not my thing, but uh, make sure to take a look at the manual and check those out. One thing that I use though, and they improved is the sampler track. We now have a sampler track version 2. So let's uh, just enable the lower zone. And I have a sampler track here with a random sample. I think it's vocal. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, the look changed a little bit. And we now have two LFOs and we have multiple destination for those LFOs. So it's really nice. You can toggle between LFO 1 and 2 by clicking on the 1 and 2. So now under the amp section, you have an LFO on the volume, you have an LFO on the panning, and to edit those LFOs, you have to click on the mud section of the amp section. So if I click on it, I see the usual envelopes that we used to have, but I now have options to tweak the LFO. And there's a lot of options for the LFOs, which is really cool. So you can sync the LFO to the tempo retrig or tempo plus beat. And you also have options for retriggering. So let's say you never want them to retrigger. If you play new notes, you let it to off only the first note. So if you play, let's say a bunch of notes, it's only going to retrigger the LFO on the first note and each note. And we obviously have different shapes. So let's say I want a, uh, a sign. I want to change the frequency and the shape. So this is a classic sign. I can change the phase as well. So it's going to let me start the LFO at, at different points. So not at zero. It's pretty handy. I can decide to tweak it with my mod wheel. And you also have random. So it's always going to start at a random phase. So it's never going to be starting at the same point in the LFO wave. So that's pretty cool. And we also have a bunch of different shapes, including random shapes. Let's try this. 
Obviously we can change the phase. Um, so it's pretty handy because you can get random results. Uh, now let's try that. This is for LFO one. So let's try to add LFO one on the pitch. So let's add a little. So to help you understand what it's doing, let me put it to sign. So it's gonna be easier and reduce the frequency a little bit. Okay, maybe put it a little bit faster. So as you can see, it's super powerful what you can do with it and you can assign it to different things. In the filter, you also have an LFO here. So uh, let's try it out. So the cutoff is getting affected by the LFO. And now we have a second LFO if we want two uh, different settings. So now I can edit the different features of the second LFO. Uh, another cool thing that they changed, and this is a personal request of mine. Now we can, let's uh, get out of this mod section right here. Let's say I want a monophonic mode. Uh, we didn't have a legato mode for monophonic mode. So what I mean by that, it, let's say this is multiple notes of a vocal performance, uh, but let's say I want to always play one note and have a loop. So let's loop, let's say this section right here, let's zoom in a little bit. So let's make the loop start here and stop there. And let's put it to alternate. So it's gonna go back and forth and we already have some crossfade, which is good. So now let's just adjust the starting point. So what this Legato mode does is now if I play multiple notes, every time I play a new note, it's going to go back to the beginning of the sample instead of keeping the loop going. To give you an example, I'll just put some silence at the beginning and you'll understand what I, I'm saying. So it's always starting back. But if I enable the Legato mode now, it's just going to keep looping while I'm changing the notes. And I can add some glide. So now we can do uh, effects like Cashmere Cat or other uh, famous DJ producers that are doing that kind of stuff with vocal chops. It's really nice. I really like that. So we now also have a quality setting right here. So right now it's set to extreme, but you can have a standard quality high best extreme so that when your uh, sample is pitched up or down while playing on your keyboard you keep a really good quality uh, keep in mind that it's gonna obviously use more of your cpu and we also have a vintage option with a bit reduction and sample re reduction i'm probably going to keep it to extreme unless I run out of CPU. Uh, another cool thing is we now have a slice option. So now it automatically detected the transient and it made some chops for me, which means that these sections are attributed to specific notes of my keyboard. So I can play. So I can play some chops just like that on my keyboard super easily and super fast. Uh, that's really cool. And once you're happy with it, uh, you can always click on that MIDI icon here and just drop it on a MIDI track. So it's going to render the performance that you have in your chop right there. So if we go back here now, uh, you have different ways of detecting the chops. Now it's set to manual, which means that I can myself add some and remove some. So if I hold Alt and click somewhere, it's going to add a chop right there. But if I want Cubase to automatically detect it, I can set it to transient and now I have a threshold. So it's going to detect the different chops depending on the threshold of those transient. I can set it to grid. So if it's on the grid, it's going to get detected. I have a mix of both. Now I have manual where I can set it manually as I did earlier. And you can also set a minimum length, a fade in, fade out and a grid catch. We also have a normalization setting now, so it's going to detect the maximum gain of a clip and normalize everything to that. So uh, let's try it out. So right now it's super low because I set it to 26, but let's set it to minus eight. 
So everything is normalized so that the loudest peak is at minus eight. So I know I'm never gonna clip. So if I put it to zero, so just before clipping, now it's perfect and it's not clipping because it's at zero precisely. So that's really cool. A lot of cool features in the assembler track version two. Really happy about that. Now let's dive into some new plugins, including Cubase 11. So I have a saxophone clip right here that I took from the media bay. Uh, let's listen to it. So yeah, it's a basic alto saxophone. Let's try the new Squasher plugin. So Squasher is a compression, well, it's a multi-band upward compression, downward compression, distortion, and gate. So it's really made to squash your tracks. A lot of people are doing this kind of stuff in modern productions. So let's try to take that saxophone and make it warm. So let's listen to it without the plugin once more. Now let's enable the plugin. As you can see, the room just popped up, you know, and we can clearly hear the room now. Let's try different presets and see what would work well. Let's try chord fattener. Wow, so it now sounds vintage and warm and super upfront. Let's bypass it once more and listen to the difference. Now with. Well, that's really cool. So there's a lot of features in that plugin. As you can see, you have the classic bands that you can select move around and you can decide if you want one band, two band, up to three bands. Uh, it is compression after all. So we have the same kind of features that you would see on compression, but you have the up and the down compression that you can decide the threshold here. We also have envelopes, so classic stuff. You can decide the mix of a different band, the output, and you can decide as well if you want to send it to uh, the gate or the squasher. Another cool thing, it's actually a new feature in Cubase, but it's I think it's a good time to introduce that feature. Cubase now allows you to have multiple sidechain sources. So for this, you can have multiple sidechain sources that will control the different bands. So let's say my bass guitar, I wanted to control the compression of the bass section right here of that track. My guitar, I want them to trigger this right here. And my vocals, I want them to trigger my high notes. I can do that super easily. So if I click on the side chaining uh, button, so it's enabled, I can click on the setting and I can choose what input. So side chain in one, two, and three are represented by the different bands. So band one, two, and three. So if I want side chain band one, I can choose my bass track. Let's say it's this one right here. So now the bass track is gonna get into the side chain of this band specifically. I can add another one for the mid portion and add, let's say my guitars. So now the guitar is gonna trigger the compressor of that band specifically. So that's really powerful. I don't know any other DAW that do that kind of stuff. So let's disable the side chain for now. Let's say now it's warm but it's a bit harsh and I want to control those low end, low mid uh, because they get too intense. And I would really like to have a dynamic EQ to do that. Well, I have a good news. Frequency, the EQ that comes with Cubase now also have dynamic options. So every eight bands can be a dynamic band. So it's basically an eight band dynamic EQ. If you don't own plugins like FabFilter Pro Q3 or any dynamic EQ, this comes free with Cubase 11. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, let's try it out. So let's listen to the sax again. <laughs> So I feel like it can get a bit harsh in the high end. So let's take the pen eight, let's make it high shelf. Let's put it down and let's enable the dynamic EQ by clicking the dynamic button here. To see the dynamic options, you have to click the down arrow and now I have the threshold, the ratio, the attack and the release. So let's uh, try to adjust the threshold. <laughs> And let's adjust it so that it compresses at the right range. So I think that's good. I want to remove some bottom. Let's say I want to put it close to 200 and I enable the dynamic EQ, adjust the threshold. 
Let's move it. So I now have a warm and clean saxophone. Let's do an AB without and with the insert just to show you what the squasher and the frequency dynamic EQ did. Now without... <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, it's really cool to have that in Cubase. I'm really happy about this, obviously. Another cool thing that they added is a Supervision plugin. Now this is the ultimate monitoring plugin. It looks simple at first, but you can add different level to it. So let's say I want to add a channel underneath, a channel on the side. Now they're all meters for now. So if I press play, it's only gonna be meters. But if I select this one and I say, I want to have a loudness meter here. Now for this one, I want to have the spectrum curve. That's really cool. Let's add more because it looks amazing and it gives me all the information that I want. So let's add uh, zones. Let's try a chronogram. This is interesting. And for this, uh, let's do panning. For this wave circle, wave circle is interesting. And for this one, the oscilloscope. So this one is not compatible with the channel configuration. Uh, so let's do time, as simple as that, so that you know where you are in your, in your uh, track. So just like that, I can see everything that I want. My loudness, my peak, my spectral curve, my time, everything that I need, everything is pretty much in there. So that's really amazing. Uh, you don't need another visual plugin like that. That's going to give you all the information. You have everything you need in this plugin right there. Spectrogram is also one that I really like. You can easily see the problematic frequencies, let's say in the low end, so you know when to clean those. That's really cool. Now, they also changed the RA2. It's It now doesn't need to bounce the track to work. So it used to be a big problem. So let's try it out. Let's use the sax track again and open something that is using Array 2. So if you go under Audio, Extensions, you can see that I have Spectral Layers, Melodyne, Revoice Pro. These are the plugins that are compatible with Array. So let's try Melodyne. So just like that, Melodyne window pops up and I can easily scroll and edit the notes right there and it's gonna adjust them in real time. what I tweaked there was all automatically adjusted. Now let's move on to the content that they added. So if we go under loop and samples in the media tab right here, we can see that they added a bunch of stuff. Now they also improved a bunch of small things like let's say the markers here, you would like to have those lines go down throughout the whole project. If you right click on the marker track and you go under show marker lines, you can decide if you want the active marker to show them or all marker tracks. So if I click on it, I now see the lines throughout the project. So it's handy if you're not up there and you don't see the specific markers, but you want to see them and match specific events timing to them. So they added a bunch of stuff like that. They also updated a bunch of plugin layout that we're still using the old interface. There's a lot of stuff also for the IDPI resolution. They improved it. It's now possible to have 125% 150% and 175% scaling. So that's also really cool. It used to be only high DPI or not. So now you have some different scaling if you want. Uh, they tweaked a bunch of stuff like that under the hood. But overall, I feel like this is a good update. Obviously, we're in the pandemic. Everybody's slowing down when it comes to production. So there's not a lot of huge features, but there's a bunch of small tweaks and really helpful features in Cubase 11. So once again, if you like that kind of content make sure you click the like button and subscribe and see you guys in my next video bye guys